Hello everyone, Michael Gracia here. Um, I had a request to demonstrate how to um, shade a cartoon character, whether I am, well, both in pencil and one in ink. Um, so I'm going to draw a cartoon character in both and show you the techniques. So I'm just going to do something simple. For example, there's my... Now the character you see you see me draw here. I don't normally draw this um, this tight to begin with. Normally I really just really go loose, sketch out the character. I probably use a couple of sheets of paper to be honest before I um, get my finished character. But for this lesson, this is fine. So the first thing you want to know is different types of shading. Now I have my regular pencil here, it's a B lead, um, HB is fine, which is your regular number two. When you want to shade, usually use a B lead, it could be a higher lead, the higher it is, the darker it looks, but it's actually a softer lead. So some techniques in shading is to hold the pencil on its side and just, if I press hard I get something like that, I can press lightly and build up. I can do something what's known as hatching, and hatching is when I just make lines. And the closer the lines are together, the darker the character, uh, the darker the shadow, sorry, not the character, the darker the, the shadow. The further apart, the lighter it is. Same thing works with cross hatching. When I take the lines I just made here, and I go in a different direction. And you can see how it's getting lighter. So the first thing I need to do is decide which direction my light source is coming in. I'm going to give him a tongue right there, sorry. Um, so I'm going to bring my light source coming in through here. Okay, so that means it's going to be bright. Here's my sun. Over here. So this side's going to be darker. So let's think about what we're going to, what we're going to have dark, what we're going to have light. Well, the inside of his mouth is normally going to be darker because it's inside the mouth. So now, you know what, I'm just going to modify his face just so he looks a little more interesting of a character. I don't like that there. And let's bring that up. Let's There we go, much better. So, I'm going to work with this one. Because in pencil, I can. I can't do this with ink because it's impossible to hold a pen and get this gradation and different heaviness depending on how I hold the pencil. So, what I like to do when I shade in pencil is I like this. When I shade in ink, I like this and I like to mix it with solids. So, my light's coming in this way. This side's going to be bright. This side is going to be darker. Okay, maybe 
maybe even a little bit under here, maybe even on the side of his head. Put in his hair. Put it on his ear a little bit, maybe a little on his face. Okay. And now that isn't as the darkest it could be, but it's darker. And I can come in and I can even make it even heavier by holding down. And really create the darkness. Now I know it looks a little messy right now. But I'll come in and I'll clean that up. Also, a bit of his nose over here would be dark. I don't know if it's that much. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. But because the light's coming in this way, the top of the nose and the side is going to get it. But this side of the nose technically isn't being seen. I think I made it a little too heavy, so I'm going to erase. And usually you'll want to use your kneaded eraser, but I didn't bring mine. Or it's actually across the room and I'm a little lazy to get up. All right. So you can see how that's going. Another great thing about shading like this is we can blend easily. And I thought I had a shading stump in front of me, but it seems like I do not. So when we don't have a shading stump, we can use a couple of things. Number one is a piece of paper. And just tear a little piece of paper off. Um, I don't want to ruin that drawing, so let me grab this. Okay, tissues work great, paper towels work great. Little piece of paper rolled up. Works fine, and you can see right there that it's picking up some of the some of the lead, which allows me to stretch it out. Now, if you don't want to use a paper or it's going to be annoying to use, use your finger. There's nothing wrong with getting dirty when you're drawing. And you see how now I'm blending it and it's coming out a bit more and it's giving this more natural shadow. You know, I may want to And I can add in some darkness to it. And you can see your finger is going to get quite dirty. So let me come in and just add in some more because it is going to be very dark. You'll notice I'm leaving a little highlight on the edge at the top of his hair because the light would be hitting that. Now I would come in and this is one of the messy pieces that happens. Okay. And that's one way to shade. By the way, I didn't add this, but there would also be a little bit of shadow right over here because his legs are supposed to be spaced. And even though the sun's coming in there, it's going to be shadowed right here. And even a little bit on the foot there. And I'm just going to draw him heavy instead of doing a gradation. But you can see how, how that there... Um, is how you shade with a pencil. Let me grab another sheet of paper. Hold on to that right there. Okay. Now with this one here, I'm just going to draw quickly with a Sharpie. It's not going to be the cleanest looking cartoon character.
Okay, I'm gonna give him a little bit of a chin there. And there's my character. Now, I used a Sharpie. You can use whatever pen you like to ink. Some people like felt tip pens. I actually like this uh, paper mate over here. You can see that if I was to draw with it, I'll draw a little thing off of here. You know, it's nice, but the Sharpie gives you a little thicker line and is better for this tutorial. So, with the lines, remember I said hatching, and I'll do over in the corner here, is just lines. Cross hatching is coming in. Now, I could come in and just add in some some places, but and the thing is, you don't want to over shade, especially when you're inking, because too much inking can make it look a little on the ugly side. So let's think about, I'm going to put the light source in the same direction. So again, this side's going to be darker. Well, number one, there's always darkness under a chin. And you don't need to hatch that, but you can use just a nice solid, and that helps create the illusion. You might also have a little bit under the nose, so we can make a heavier line there, but we'll do something else. This over here, and I'm going to rotate my paper because that's how I like to do stuff. Um, now, let's think about it. This body part is round. Okay, so I don't want to use just straight lines, but curved lines will help create the illusion of roundness. Okay, see that? And if I want this to be really dark, I might add in a solid. And there's my telephone ringing. Pretty sure it's not for me. I'm just going to add in a little bit more, because remember, the closer the lines are, the darker the area. Now, I'm not going to lie, I really don't like the way I shaded this one. All right, I prefer maybe sometimes a nice little solid, which I can add right here. But hatching is a great technique. And it helps create a balance um, from darker to lighter, because you can't do the gradation like you can with the pencil. Um, I don't really like I don't really like hatching on simple cartoon characters like this. If we look, um, let me just pull it out real quick. Then where did I put it? If you'll excuse me. When I'm doing simple cartoon characters, I'm looking right now at the complete uh, Peanuts by Charles Schultz, sorry, uh, 1950 to 1952. I love this book. We can open up in here and see any of the pages. You'll notice that as we look at a strip, that he really doesn't use any kind of hatching, except maybe in the hair of this guy right here. You can see that. He uses a lot more solids. There's a little bit of hatching on the ground that he uses for shadows and horizon lines. But the, it's simple. Um, another great one to look at And I don't know, oh, here's where I put it. it. Is everyone's favorite fat cat, Garfield. Unless you like Heathcliff, then that's your favorite fat cat. But let's look at what Jim Davis does here on some of his pictures. The only real hatching that's done on this, and it's not technically hatching because 
They're part of Garfield, are his stripes. All right. When you're doing comic strips, you really don't want to put in a lot of shadows and detail when you're doing simple cartoon characters. By doing that, um, it's going to take away from the drawing. However, I have another book here we're going to look at. Okay, DC Showcase Blue Beetle. Now, I love these books. These are copies of the old stories in black and white. And I'm a I love the Blue Beetle. Okay? But even on the cover, we can look sorry, at Blue Beetle himself. And we can see here where he's being hatched on the arms. I'll move it out. I think you can't see it. But he's mixed with solids. Okay, some heavy lines, thin lines, and solids. And we can turn to any page, and we can see how that's affected here. You see this character right here in the background? He's got a lot of solid blacks, and as we come closer, we got some hatching. Almost looks like it's solid into some lines. The hair is hatched. A little bit of hatching on his collar. All right? So, when you're doing more superhero, hatching is fine. When you're doing more cartoony, less is more. Everyone has their own style, and people could tell you different, but this is my own personal opinion. Um, and if you look at a lot of the comic strips, it's very simplistic shading. So, you choose how you like to work, either pencil or ink. I will tell you... If you ink and you just ink solids and then go in with colored pencil, this technique will work for colored pencil as well. And you can work with color and start off light and build up to the darker areas. You always want to start light and build to the darker areas because it's easier to darken than it is to lighten. Once you start adding the darker colors, it's going to be hard to erase, especially some colored pencils aren't even erasable. Um, so I hope that helps, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.